This week, a short update on airplane maintenance and getting back to flying during this never-ending pandemic. Well, the last video I posted was way back in March when I recorded my trip with my son Spencer up to Canada, just as North America was about to be shut down for the pandemic. Shortly after returning from the Toronto trip, I began my annual condition inspection and maintenance. This year, once again, I had several service bulletins from vans to complete. The main one was to replace the nose gear leg and wheel fork. Apparently cracks had been discovered in other aircraft, although mine seemed fine. A complication, however, was that the lower wheel pan for the new fork needed to be bigger than my original, so of course I had to rebuild one. Well, the pant was a tedious job, and while I'm not too unfamiliar with working with fiberglass, trying to fit the new fiberglass shell to the existing top was not that easy to do. I'm reasonably satisfied with how it ended up, although I do need to fill some holes and some seams. But with the weather turning very hot in the summer in the hangar, I'm going to defer the rest of the work on this project until probably September and I'll get back to flying in the meantime. Well, the rest of the annual was mostly routine. I removed the carbs and had them serviced again this year. Uh, this year at 600 hours, I removed the gearbox and had that inspected, and of course, they found some wear, and that cost a few extra bucks for some replacement parts. While I was dragging out my annual, I took that opportunity to complete some hangar projects. Based on an idea from uh, Jerry Cotter down at the airport, I built a remote relay that I'm able to control with text messages. This way I could turn on my engine preheater hours before arriving at the airport. I also built a hood to better organize my tools over top of my workbench. I finally got around to sorting through my hardware, organizing and labeling it. And since I was spending so much time in the hangar, I started building out a little kitchen. Meanwhile, our chapter was meeting for a few months remotely, which was working reasonably well. And fortunately, with the nicer weather, we're now able to meet outside, trying to get back to a sense of uh, normal function. In some other interesting news, our chapter president, Doug Logg, purchased his first aircraft, which is a 1946 Aronka Chief. And one of our past presidents, Adam Silverstein, purchased a T-34 on the field and I am still waiting for my ride in that aircraft. Well, like a lot of people, I've eaten a lot of good food over the last few months and some drink. I gained a few pounds. I grew my hair out. I eventually found a barber who was willing to cut my hair and I got rid of some of it. Well, more importantly, back to flying. So in early June, I was able to conduct a three-hour flight up to Waterloo, Ontario to pick up my son Spencer and return him. Now the border with Canada at the time was still closed, in fact it's closed as I'm recording this video, but I was able to convince the Canadian Border Services that I would be okay to fly in, not leave the airport, pick up Spencer, and return without undergoing a 14-day quarantine. Spencer is an American citizen, so Customs and Immigration in Buffalo could not refuse either one of us to re-enter the country. I didn't record very much video on that trip, but we had a really beautiful view of Niagara Falls as we were crossing back into the United States.
On a recent Sunday morning, I was up for an adventure, so I decided to fly out, even though there was a TFR active in the area, uh, down to Ocean City, New Jersey, and maybe take a walk out on the beach. <laughs> 